What are window functions and how can they help us to understand and analyze our data better? Well, in the most recent Bamboo Weekly, we used a variety of window functions to analyze NATO spending, spending by NATO Alliance member countries. We took it from NATO's very own website. If you go down, 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 down on this page, you will see that for every year you can compare what different NATO Alliance members have been spending on a variety of different things. If we open up my spreadsheet here, you'll see this is the Excel spreadsheet that I downloaded. You can see that there are a number of different tables. Table one, defense expenditure. Table two, also defense expenditure. Table three, as a share of GDP, and on, on, and on. There are a whole lot of different pieces here and sheets here that we can use to analyze the data. So I asked you to uh, analyze two different things. First of all, read the defense expenditure from table two into a pandas data frame. All right, and then we wanna find out which five countries increase their NATO spending most or increase their spending most as a percentage in the latest budget cycle. So there are a bunch of different things we're gonna to have to do in order for this to work. So first of all, I'm gonna say import pandas as PD. Let's start with that so we can load that up, make sure I've got my file name there. And how can I load up an Excel file? Well, I can say pd.read Excel. And I say file name, and does that work? Yes, it does. I get a data frame based on it, but it's not really what I want. We see a lot of NANs here. We saw a lot of un unnamed columns here. But if we go down, 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 well, actually, if you look at like, like I don't know, dot, let's say lock, uh, colon 10. If you look at all these, you'll start to see here, Albania, Belgium, if we go up a little bit, we'll see some column names. So basically we're gonna have to play with this a bit. And what are we gonna have to do? We're gonna have to tell pandas which row in the file contains the column names. Well, the good news is that there are column names. If I look here at sheet one, table one on sheet one, we'll see that on line eight here, we have the column names, but there are two things then we have to do. First of all, we have to say which sheet we wanna read from because otherwise it could be anything. So we'll say sheet name equals, and we'll just double check, it says table one. And the second thing we wanna do is say header equals, and on what line? And I already told you it's on line eight. So we are of course going to say seven. Why am I saying seven if it's eight in Excel? Because Excel starts counting with one and we in the Python and Pandas world start counting with zero. Okay, so we've got all this stuff. What happens if I read it now? And the good news is that actually the column names are what we would want for most things. Not everything, but most things. We have the years, 2014, 2015, 2016. We go all the way to the end. We see 2023E, that's estimate. 2024E, that's estimate. But we're just going to call it 2023 and 2024. But then we go down many, many, many lines here. And if we look at the original spreadsheet, that's not what we want. We have one table here at the top, but we have another table here at the bottom. Here it's in current prices and here it's in constant 2015 prices. So if I only want the top part, I'm gonna have to tell pandas only read in some of it. Okay, well, I can do that. I can say the header equals seven. I'll say n rows equals 33. I checked that in advance. And if I do that, then we're gonna see that we have these rows here. We have our column names. We have two blank rows. We're gonna get rid of those in a little bit. And then all the way down to United States, which is the final one listed. So we have all of our data now, but now we need to clean it up a little bit and manipulate it so it's in a version that we can actually use. Okay, so now I'm gonna say drop. Drop means I can drop either columns or rows. If I wanna drop columns, I say columns equals, and then list them and say unnamed zero and unnamed one, very exciting column names, right? Why am I dropping these? I probably could keep them, but it's just kind of ugly and unnecessary. And I don't need these because they're just NANs. Because if we look at the original spreadsheet, like we've got the names here, we've got like these extra thingies here. A is like grayed out and B is empty. So let's just get rid of those things. They didn't have names before, so we'll just go with that. And if I do that, you'll see that now, unnamed two, which is our country name, that is now the leftmost one. Well, let's make that into our index, right? We can do that. I can say set index of unnamed two. Could I rename it? Yeah. Do I have to? No. So now we have, uh-oh, there's something wrong there. None of unnamed two are in the columns. Oh, what did I do? Oh, because I misspelled it. There we go. And now unnamed two is right there as our index, meaning that the country names are in our index. Yeah, but we still have these two rows at the top. So I'm just going to say here dot I lock two colon, and dot .ilock lets me count based on the positions, not using the index, which would be the names of the countries, but using the positions. I say I want starting at row two, meaning the third one on, and now we look at this, and sure enough, now I have a data frame with year names or year numbers as the columns. I have country names as the index. That's pretty good. 
let's save this thing, df equals that. And then I could even say df.shape, and shape is 31 rows and 11 columns, and df.dtypes, and we see that all the columns are float64, which is good because we want to do some calculations. So reading it in was, took a little while, but now, now, what do I want to do? I want to find out which five countries increased their NATO spending most as a percentage in the latest cycle from 2023 to 2024. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to compare 2023 to 2024 as a percentage. How can I do that? Because normally, if I do a calculation in pandas, I'm calculating one value, maybe a whole bunch of values. But here, this means comparing the 2023 column with the 2024 column. And while we're at it, we can even compare each column with the one to its left. This is a kind of function known as a window function. And we typically do it on the rows, right? Each row versus the other rows, but we can do it on the columns too. And pandas comes with a bunch of built-in uh, window functions. And the one we're gonna use here is, say pf, we're gonna say here dot PCT change, that means percentage change. And I say here, axis equals columns, meaning don't compare each row to the previous row. Don't compare this, each cell to the cell in the previous row. Rather, compel, compare each cell to the cell in the row, in the column to its left. And if we run this here, we see that now we have percentages. So 2024, we see a 23% increase over 2023. 2023 is a 55% increase over 2022, and so on and so forth. Notice that the first column is all NANs, not a number, and that's because it can't, there's nothing to be compared with. So it's not going to be zero because it was not zero change. It's NAN because we can't, com com we can't you know, calculate anything there, can't compute anything there. Well, now that I've got that, I can just grab the final column. I can say 2024E grab that column and now I have a series because each column in a data frame is a series. And now that I've got that, well, now we have the percent change from 2023 to 2024 for each of the countries. So I now wanna find which five countries increase the most. I can say dot n largest, five. And sure enough, we see now that of these, right? Turkey, um, let's see, percent change, actually people call, oh, did I do here, df? Something is a little different between what I had in my original notes. So let me just double check that I did everything right. Table, oh, table two. Ha, 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 ha. That would help, right? It helps to read in the correct thing, folks. And now we have, there we go, there we go. So what happened here? I read in the wrong sheet name. Sheet name table one, sheet name table two. And it's a fluke, right? Hats off to them at NATO that each of the sheets actually has the same width, the same length, the same columns, the same index, right? So I didn't notice it right away but the numbers didn't match up. And we can see here that Romania increased in the most recent year by 50%, Czechia also 50% and so on and so forth. So we see that some countries in NATO are really increasing their defense budgets by quite a bit from year to year. But that's not all I asked you. I also asked you to find out what about, right, what about comparing not 2024 to 2023, the previous year, but 2024 to 2020, uh, uh, 2014, the first year we have. Well, that's gonna be an almost identical sort of thing, right? I just wanna do percent change. I wanna get 2024, but wait, percent change is comparing with one to the left. I don't want one to the left. I want a lot to the left. How much to the left? Well, how about everything minus one? What we can do? We can say here periods equals, and then I'm just gonna say len of df columns minus one. Right, could I have counted how many columns there are? Of course I could have, but there's a nice automatic way to do it. And if we get rid of these two rows here in our, in our comparison, you'll see when I do this percent change, everything is NAN except for 2024. And that's because we, we went from 2024 all the way back to 2014 and compared it and got the percentage change. So now I uncomment that, and now I have just that series, and then I get the enlarges. We see that from 2014 until now, Lithuania has quadrupled its defense budget. Latvia has more than tripled its defense budget. Hungary, Poland, Czechia, and it might, just might have to do with the fact that all these countries, except Czechia, all border Ukraine, and they've seen what Russia is able to do, and they realize, hmm, maybe we should up our defense budget. Okay, so that was the first use of a window function. The second use is, I want to find out, so the U.S. spends more on defense than any other NATO country, right? And so Germany and the U.K. come next. So I want to find out 
if we remove, so, so I want to find out like, um, so the U S spends as much as the next N countries in NATO on defense. What is N? So how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to still use my data frame before, from before, right? That data frame, we're still using the same data because I now loaded it from the right sheet. And I'm going to look at just 2024 E, right? Just the 2024 uh, estimates. Okay, now what do I want to do? Well, first I want to sort it by amount from greatest to small. So I'm going to say your sort values ascending equals false. And now we get, we can see the United States pays the most on defense and then Germany, UK, France, Poland, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's from the most to the least. I don't really, so let's grab actually from this. So let's say you know, US spending equals, and I'll just say here DF block of, we'll say United States and 2024E. That's just like, gives us the value that we want, right? That just assigns it to a variable. But once we're here, then we don't want the United States. We want to go away. I know that's like a popular political sort of thing to say nowadays, but that's not what I mean. So we're going to get rid of it from our data frame and now, or from our series, and now our series contains Germany until Montenegro from the most spend to the least spend. So what I want to do is see where do we have to go until the spending matches or, or is greater than the U.S. spending? How am I going to do that? Well, what I basically want to do is say, okay, does Germany spend more than the U.S.? No. How about Germany plus the U.K.? Yes or no. How about Germany plus the UK plus France? Yes or no. What I'm doing then is I want to sum these, but I want to sum them in a funny kind of way. Starting with one, then one plus two, then one plus two plus three, then one plus two plus three plus four, until I get to all of them. That is another kind of window function. This is known as an expanding window. And we'll run the expanding window on sum, and that will do exactly what I want. Watch this. I'm going to say here, expanding.sum. And so we're going to start with Germany and then the UK and then France. And it's going to go up and up and up and up and up until we get to Montenegro, where it's going to be the sum of all these from the most to the least. This is great, but how do we now find out where the US fits in here? Well, I can say here dot lock lambda s underscore. So I'm using dot lock and lambda, which I often use in order to filter things out. Notice that it's a series here, not a data frame. So we're going to say s underscore is our temporary variable. And I say s underscore greater than or equal to US spending. So I want to know which rows in this series do we see a number that is greater than or equal to U.S. spending? And the answer is none of them. None of them. Basically, the U.S., it turns out, spends more than all the rest of NATO combined, at least according to these numbers that we got from uh, NATO. We would not have been able to calculate it so easily were it not for window functions. So not only have we learned today something about NATO, um, but we've also learned how we can use window functions to answer certain questions that would otherwise be really tedious or difficult to answer. Please let me know what you think and what questions you have. Leave comments. I love seeing them. And I love answering them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget that I have new problems every week in Bamboo Weekly at bambooweekly.com. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. I'll be back really soon with lots more about Python and pandas and everything in between. See you then.